There are a lot of reasons that I choose Final Cut Pro to edit all my videos. I mean, most people know that it's really fast and the interface is intuitive, so it's quick to learn, but I think often people underrate how powerful it is. And part of the reason is that it really gets more powerful once you get a few key plugins. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I use some of my favorites. Subscribers have definitely seen them before. You probably didn't even realize there were plugins. They're all from Motion VFX. I've been using their stuff for a long time. They have a ton of incredible products, and this isn't a sponsored video. I was talking to them about some of the plugins that I love, and they offered to put them all together into a set. So I will get some commissions if you click on the link in the description below, but otherwise, hopefully you just find something useful here. Let's start with one that'd be perfect for the kind of video I'm making right now, M Tutorial. So it's got all of the things things that will help guide your viewer through the instructions you're giving on screen. There are so many in here. I'm not gonna be able to go through all of them, just a few that I do use. A good example here is click. And you can see how easy it is to click and drag it into the timeline. A blank screen recording without guidance is hard to follow. So I'm just gonna grab this little cursor, move it on top of my real cursor, and when I play it back, boom, you can tell exactly where I clicked. And there's a few others like arrows that can emphasize movement. There's also a bunch of helpful ways to highlight the frame, like I like this scribbly highlighter. Not only can you position it to be on the part of the screen that you want, but each of the strokes you can move around so it has a custom look to it as well. Can I tell you a secret? A lot of the most powerful plugins are pretty subtle. So this zoom effect I use all the time. You just drag the title onto your timeline and I'm gonna combine it with a highlight here. In this shot, I'm trying to draw attention to how long the processing takes. So I'll put the highlight on top of the progress bar and I'm gonna zoom in and position it right over the highlight. So now when you watch it play back, you can see how long it takes for a Pixel 7 Pro to process a portrait mode photo. A little longer than I'd like, but it really clearly guides the eye where to look. And with a lot of these plugins, you can turn on and off animate in and animate out. So I could start the zoom in the middle of a shot and then end the shot before zooming out so that we just stay zoomed in. You don't always need to both move in and out. Another useful way to highlight things is the selection line. I'll start by making it my usual yellow, make the line fatter, and then I can actually change the exact shape of how it's circling things, but I can give it a kind of hand-drawn look. So it doesn't have to be a perfect circle, it can kind of be around the shape of the area we wanna look at. I can add a description. In this case, there's already text on screen, so I don't need it. And if I want it to look more handwritten, I can turn off closed lines and just manually move these exactly where I want them to be. Oh, and it's important to put it under this zoom layer so that as I zoom in, it looks like I'm zooming in on the handwriting that's happening and it all clicks together. I can usually put these subtle looks to use in every video I make, but let's take a look at some bolder plugins. Next is M Music Video, and obviously this is for anybody that shoots music videos. There's a ton of stuff in here, like some great typography for opening titles or closing credits. Okay, but let's stylize this a bit. Let's add a burn effect for these first two shots. You can quickly add a letterbox, which animates in and kind of gives you a cinematic aspect ratio in just a few seconds. And if you don't have an anamorphic lens, you can add one in post. But you know what keeps me coming back to M Music Video? The subtle effects. There's actually some really great ones in here too. Zoom in and zoom out are some of my favorites. It also comes with some basic transitions. So instead of a hard cut, I can drop this on, make it a little shorter, and then we get this crazy digital dissolve. But I'm telling you, it's the subtle effects that are the most useful. So let's use zoom out. I'll put this at the start of the clip and it gives us a continuous zoom out. So what we get now is a match cut and then pulling out to see all of the specs about these two cell phones. Of course, you can do zooms with keyframes in Final Cut, but it's way slower to do and also keyframe support isn't great in Final Cut. It could be a lot better. So I really like dropping these on. And this shot leads us to our next plugins. Let's take a look at M Features. If you talk about products or anything with specs or benchmarks, these are perfect for you. There's just a whole bunch of basically comparisons between different products, advantages, disadvantages, just a whole bunch of ways of displaying data without spending any time laying it out yourself. So I customize these two to have my channel font. They animate in and then on their own, they also animate out. So I don't have to go to all the work of keyframing and all this other stuff that Motion can handle well, Final Cut Pro can't handle that well, and I think a lot of Premiere editors don't even know you can do in Final Cut. Motion VFX also have a ton of title presets. You might have actually seen some of them in Apple Keynotes. One set that I've been using a lot lately is called M-Title Kinetic 2. They have pretty simple animations that are easy to lay out, easy to work with, but they really look like you put a lot more work into it. So let's just find one that works. We'll drag it over here. Let's time it right as he lands. Nice. Change it to my channel font. I'll make it bigger. There's already a gradient here, which I really like these colors they've chosen. But I don't know, we can just mix them up a little. Probably gonna make it worse going so fast. 
and we get a result that looks like we put a lot more time into it than we did. By the way, here's a little trick. If you're using white text, which I do all the time, it can be really helpful to just make sure that your white point in Final Cut Pro isn't too high. So we could drag it down a bit in the highlights, a bit in the midtones. Just make sure that text is visible. In my videos, I usually try to have any clipping points, any true white be less than white. The white point should be lower than the pure white of the background on your screen. Okay, one more that's really useful. This is called M Counter. This is how I used it in my recent video comparing the Pixel 7 Pro to the iPhone 14 Pro. You can see it just shows how long each of them takes. So as I go through, the timer keeps going. Even while the iPhone on the right is finished, the Pixel is still processing. But there's a ton of different formats. You can have it be more of like a progress bar. Or if you're running a time lapse, you could be showing the duration of the whole thing. And you can set it over any number range. You could freeze it on a specific number. If you haven't tried to animate numbers or time in Final Cut Pro before, well, I have and take it from me, it's miserable. So don't do it, just let Motion VFX do it for you. Each of these plugins can do way more than I have time to show you in this video, but all of them combined, this set really will make Final Cut Pro way more powerful. So head over to Motion VFX, see how they work, see what else I didn't have time to show you today. And if you wanna learn more about editing in Final Cut Pro, I've got a whole playlist for you to watch next. I'll see you over there, guys.